In this video we're going to talk about shift basics and specifically to start with the horizontal and vertical shifts. So you should have, if you're in my class, you should have your shift chart that was on the class calendar where you could download it or uh, I also send it to you in email. So you should have that in front of you on your iPad at this point. But this is the chart, the shift chart that we're looking at. So in this first video we're going to talk about the horizontal and vertical shifts. You'll notice the horizontal right and left shifts go together so they are similar so we'll talk about those first you'll notice a couple things one the horizontal shifts are going opposite of the sign for example we have the x minus two here you might think that that would be a left shift but it's actually opposite of the sign and is a right horizontal shift here we have our x plus two you might think that that should be to the right but it's actually opposite of the sign so that's something that you need to remember and it is actually a left horizontal shift. You'll also notice that the number, the minus 2 and the plus 2 here, are inside the parentheses with x. When that occurs, you will have a horizontal shift. It doesn't matter what the number is. In this case, we're using 2. So we're going 2 right here. We're going 2 left here. If we had x minus 2, we would be, uh, pardon me, x minus 4, we would be going 4 right. If we had x plus 4, we would be going 4 left. So we're just using 2 as an example here. Uh, and it wouldn't matter if you're talking about the quadratic parent function, which we'll talk about today, the square root parent function, our rational parent function, our exponential parent functions. When it's in parentheses with x, and we'll see more examples uh, as we move forward in this lesson, uh, it, it doesn't matter that the same rules will apply. So the nice thing, once you get these rules down, it doesn't matter what parent function you're applying them to, they, the rules will still apply. So, again, today we're talking about horizontal and vertical shifts. So, horizontal shift, one more time, opposite of the sign, and it's in parentheses with x. Now, for our vertical shifts, this one, the vertical shifts go with the sign. So, this one makes initially a little more sense intuitively. And we are going with a plus 2, we'll have a up vertical shift with a minus 2 we will have a down vertical shift and you notice that it is outside the parentheses with x horizontal shift opposite of sign in parentheses vertical shift outside the parentheses with x and it goes with the sign so let's take a look at some examples down here okay first we have our horizontal shift right and horizontal shift left I've gone ahead and pulled the calculator tables out of the calculator so all I did here of course is went to y equals put in x squared went to my table for a table of values so you'll notice the parent function y equals x squared is this table is here so we'll use that to graph and then we have in, in this table example I put our right shift in y1 and our left shift in y2 so you notice y1 is our right shift y2 is our left shift so let's start graphing I've gone ahead and put colored boxes around each of these so we can keep it consistent when we're graphing so let's see what the behavior of these shifts are our parent function of course has the point 0 0 so that's easy right here the nice thing about a quadratic graph is that it is symmetrical about its axis of symmetry and our parent function has the axis of symmetry that is the y axis or x equals zero so we can just go on either side of that evenly graph some points and then it's pretty easy to graph it so let's use the point two four and then on the opposite side symmetrical from the y axis we'll use negative two four so you, this is a review from Algebra 1, but when you have 2, 4 on a, the parent function of a parabola, negative 2 will also have a y value of 4. So its opposite sign of x will have the same y value. So we have 2, 4 here, and we have negative 2, 4. So we can go ahead and graph that in here. Okay, so the parent function looks like this. So next, let's graph the horizontal shift to the right. So we're going right. So this, this makes it very easy. We can see in our table here, but when you're graphing it, it's very simple. I'm going to move all of the points to the right two. So I was at zero, zero, so now I'm going to zero, two. So my x-coordinate is changing here. And then I'm going to go 
I did have negative 2, 4, and now I'm going to have 0, 4. So I've moved 1, 2 to the right here. Grab this point, and I'm moving 1, 2 to the right. And then I just graph it in here. Okay. So same width. It's not compressed or stretched horizontally or vertically anyway. It's just moved to the right. So now let's graph our shift to the left so that would be our x plus 2 quantity squared again the plus 2 and the minus 2 here are in the parentheses with x so that gives us our horizontal shift so we'll look at our table down here and we notice that we have uh, a couple of different points going on there so let's all we're gonna have to do is go to negative 2 and 0 negative 2 0 and then we can move this one Two to the left, one, two. So that gives us the point zero, four. So you'll notice over here we have zero, four right here for our y2 graph. Then we'll go one, two from here. So one, two. And we have the point zero, ne pardon me, negative four, zero. So it's off our table here but we know that it's there. All I did with the horizontal shift, I took the parent function points and I moved it right or I moved it left, the, the number that was in parentheses. That's all I did. I grabbed this point, moved it to the left for our horizontal shift left, which was our x plus 2 squared. So I grabbed this point, moved it to, grabbed this point, moved it to, grabbed the vertex, moved it to, and then graphed it in. Same thing for our shift to the right. Grab this point, move to right. Grab this point, move to right, right there. Grab this point, move to right, and graft it in there. So that is our horizontal shift left and right. Okay, now let's go down and look at our vertical. All right, let's put our boxes around these so that we can keep this straight again when we graph. Do the second one in pink, third one in orange. Okay, so we've got our vertical shifts. We've got shift up. Notice we're going with the sign. We're plus two. We're going with the sign, and we are outside the parentheses with x. So it's x squared plus two as opposed to what we had up here, which was the number was in the parentheses with x. So see the difference. That was our horizontal shift. Here is our vertical shift. All right, so we again, we've got our parent function over here. That one was easy to graph. We'll just throw that graph in here. Whoops, I need to use green for parent function. So we have 0, 0 as our vertex. And then we used the points negative 2, 4, and 2, 4 to graph that before. Negative 2, 4. So it looks approximately like this. So there's our parent function. Now let's apply a vertical shift to that. Okay, vertical shifts are very easy. We're going to take these points, our points, and we're going to move them up to for a vertical shift up. That's all we're doing. We're taking the x squared graph and moving it up to. So we're going 1, 2 from there, graph that. 1, 2 from there, graph that. 1, 2 from there, graph that. All right, and you'll notice that we still keep the same width. We're just shifted up. So that's our vertical shift up. And it's reflected here in our table. Before we were at 0, 0 here in our parent function, and then we're at 0, 2. We were at 1, 1. Now we're at 1, 3. So notice our y coordinates are changing. Our x coordinates do not change, just our y coordinates. All right, let's do our vertical shift down now. So we're going to take our parent function, we're going to move these points down to 1, 2, there's our vertex at the point 0, negative 2. Take this point down to, right here, take this point down to 1, 2, and there it is. Same, same width, it's not compressed in any way, we're just moving it down to. Okay, so in the table it's reflected. We were at 0, 0, now we're at 0, negative 2. We were at negative 1, 1. Now we're at negative 1, negative 1. It's down 2. 
our y coordinates are changing. We were at 1, 1, now we're at 1, negative 1, for example. So all of our y coordinates were just moved down by 2. When we moved up, all of our y coordinates were moved up 2. So those are the basics of horizontal and vertical shifts. In the next video, we're going to look at horizontal compression and stretch and vertical stretch and compression. See you in the next video.